Hi friends, Crystal here from Homemaking on the Homestead. And today I am going to do a, an update video, part two of why I no longer make homemade laundry soap. It's been well over a year and a half since I posted that original video. And little did I know that it would just have a, an incredible amount of views. It's crazy. It's like got over 4,000, 6,000 views. I actually can't remember. Okay, I just verified that and it has had over 65,000 views. <laughs> so when you're a little channel like me, it's like, whoa. I started immediately getting all kinds of comments. I got questions. I got, you know, people wanted to know various things. I got told what I was doing wrong. I got told, you know, what, um, what their experiences have been. And there was just so much that it quickly became overwhelming. And I thought to myself, well, I'm going to try a few different things, maybe experiment on some different options and uh, see what kind of conclusions that I could come to. Well, in the end, what happened is I just didn't really get to it. I did a little research here, I did a little research there, but I do feel like there was enough questions and enough comments uh, that I wanted to clarify some things and I wanted to answer some questions and throw out some ideas and maybe have you all respond to me, uh, in, in, you know, what your options are if you found something that is actually working for you. Anyway, okay, so the first thing that I should say is that if you have not seen my original video on why I don't make homemade laundry to soap, I am going to post it right up here. And um, I, I encourage you to watch that so that you can get a better understanding. In that video, I break down the difference between soap and detergent and how they clean. And I go into... Um, more detail than I want to cover here because I don't want a remake of the exact same video. Uh, but So I really encourage you to watch that. Soaps and detergents are very different and uh, they can cause different problems. They require different ways of cleaning. And so it's good to understand that if you have not had success with your homemade laundry soap, uh, then you definitely would want to watch that so that you could see. I've had people say that they thought they were doing something wrong because it was leaving their clothes gray and dingy and towels that wouldn't absorb water and building up of soap scum and things like that. So let's get into it and uh, and go into a little bit more detail on other other aspects of it. So first off, the thing that jumped out at me the most as people were, were commenting back was the fact that uh, not everybody makes homemade soap for the same reason. So it's good to know why you are making your own, you're desiring to make your own laundry detergent. For some people it is a cost issue and when I started making it I did it because it was like you know three cents a load back in the day when I was doing it and it was just incredibly cheap and I thought well you know at the time I was washing about 25 loads of laundry a week I had eight children and so I could definitely use that kind of a cost savings that was the motivation for me to start making it some people are allergic to the chemicals they can cause their skin to itch or break out in eczema if they have problems like that uh, some people have septic tanks I do as well uh, and they're concerned about the chemicals in their septic tank. I will say that I've used uh, store-bought detergents for a long time and it's never caused my septic tanks, my tank any problems. So, you know, but it might for other people. I don't, I don't know. Um, also, the, the topic of HE washers came up and what I said in my original video is that when I purchased an HE washer, I started delving more into homemade laundry soap uh, because you know the washers and dryer sets are not cheap in any way and the warranty is very clear about the fact that you need to have uh, approved HE detergent when you're doing using the machine or it will void your warranty and that got me of course wondering why you you need that but nonetheless at that point I had already been making laundry soap for about three years and I had found that the, my clothing the colors were no longer as bright my whites were very gray my um, towels did not absorb water and I was having so many problems that at that point I just decided to put that aside and go ahead and just use the recommended 
laundry soap. But in my research, it got me questioning, of course, why this, is, why this was happening and why this was a problem. So I had a lot of people say, you know, I guess they misunderstood my video because I had a lot of people say, well, it's because of the HE machine. Well, I never used it in an HE machine. I used it in a standard washing machine with a center post agitator. And, um, and also, people would talk about hard water versus soft water. Well, hard water will cause those problems. Well, I have soft water. Fabric softener sheets, people would talk about, you know, if you use any kind of fabric softener or fabric softener sheets or that type of thing, you know, you need to use vinegar. And uh, I didn't use any of those and I, I use vinegar, yet I still was experiencing these problems. So what I, what I learned, of course, was that soap is a product of either animal fats or vegetable fats, lye, and some sort of liquid. Typically, it's, it's water. So I'm, I'm actually a soap maker. So, you know, these are a couple bars of my most recent batch of soap. And I used olive oil and coconut oil in these. And, and I used water for the base and, of course, lye. But when I was talking about it in my original video, I mentioned that I used lard for the laundry soap. And that is because lard is a very inexpensive soap and it's very low in suds. And it, it worked, you know, it, it makes soap. <laughs> so then the most common thing that I had people telling me was that, well, there's your problem. You know, you, you're using lard. That's going to clog up your drains and going to clog up uh, everything and leave all kinds of problems. And uh, so what they didn't understand that is there is a basic soap making process that is, um, it, it's basically, it's called saponification. When you mix oil and lie together with a liquid, your soap, your, your mixture then goes through a chemical process. And so when you are completely done, what you are left with is just soap. And there is no lard left in the recipe. Now, sometimes you can adjust the, the amount of lye to give you a little bit of creaminess in your soap. I do that when I make this. This is hand soap, body soap. We use it in the shower. Um, and, you know, I have a bar at every sink, and I leave a little bit of uh, room for, th for the fats to add a little bit of creamies, but we're talking tiny, tiny bit. When I made it for uh, laundry, I had it at, there was zero fat left over, so, you know, it, it, I'm not just like throwing a scoop of lard into my laundry machine, into my washing machine to do clothes. When detergents are made, they are made from petroleum products. And, you know, you've heard the term crude oil. This is where we get our gasoline. This is where we get uh, diesel fuel. This is where we get the oils uh, from the ground to make all kinds of various products. And laundry detergent is, or any kind of detergent, is made from petroleum products. And the biggest difference between a detergent and a soap is, the, is the, the way they clean. Whether it's a detergent or a soap, they work in, in a similar fashion, is that they release the surface tension of the water so that the, the dirt will lift easily. The difference, of course, as I explained in my original video, is that the way that they do that is different. Uh, soap requires friction, so that's why it's good, you know, you can wash your hands with it because you're rubbing your hands back and forth. Uh, you're rubbing it on a washcloth and you're washing your, you know, your skin. That is friction and it works well for that. But in a wash machine, you're not getting as much friction and so therefore it definitely is going to not allow all the dirt to escape, which is why eventually you have microscopic dirt that stays into the fabric and it creates um, dingy clothes, towels that don't absorb and all that type of thing. In the comments, one thing that I found to be very interesting was the fact that there were a few people who said that they had been using their homemade laundry soap for quite a long time and they did not have those problems. But those people were also the ones that said that they had older washing machines. And I kind of wonder, you know, one lady said she had a 30-year-old washing machine, and 
I know most of us have probably seen uh, the deterioration of appliances, their abilities to last, and I think things were just made so much better that back then that it is quite possible that they just simply were made better and that agitating action created as the clothes rubbed together were creating more friction for them. Unfortunately, in the newer machines, I don't, we don't get that and I think that's one of the reasons why this does not work. One other factor about putting soap into your laundry detergent recipe is that soap will leave soap scum behind. And it is this soap scum that can build up on the inside of the washing machine, it can clog up the tubes in your washer, and it can cause all kinds of problems. One lady said that she had um, ruined one of her, her almost brand new HE wash machine due to soap scum clogging it up. So it is a definite concern even if you use vinegar to rinse it. Soap scum is a, is, is a, is a serious thing. I even had somebody try to tell me that Zote uh, was a detergent bar <laughs> and I'm like no nope, sorry it's not. Zote is made from beef tallow and coconut oil so it is definitely a soap bar, not a detergent bar. And the same is with Felsnap that has a few more oils in it, but I know it has coconut oil and beef tallow and some other things. So both of those are, um, are soap bars. Detergents do not leave behind soap scum, so that's why they work much better. So one of the things I know that a lot of people wanted was a solution. Okay, well what if I can't use laundry detergent or uh, maybe because of allergies or, um, or the cost or uh, whatever, the, the, you know, the smells. I, I mean, I'm allergic to the smells. I don't know if I'm allergic, but I smell really heavily scented laundry detergent and it just will make me, give me a huge headache. So um, that I always have to, that's why I get the all free and clear and my husband's got skin issues that the detergents just really irritate him. But all free and clear seems to work. So that's what I'm currently using. But I am looking at different options, especially things that people have mentioned. Okay, so what are some options and suggestions that I can give you if you are trying to avoid using uh, laundry detergent? And now, because I haven't experienced, I can only give you some ideas um, and, t and tell you what some other people have done. Uh, and again, it goes back to why you're doing it. So not all of these suggestions are going to work for everybody, availability and whatever cost and things like that. But I'm going to share a few of them. One of the most common um, conclusions a lot of people came to was to replace the Zote or the Felsnaphtha, whichever one you use, with an inexpensive laundry detergent like Foca or Roma. Both of these are readily available at stores like Walmart. I've seen it there, and it is it is very cheap. Um, it I have looked at it, and it is not HE friendly. But if you, that isn't a concern, then replacing the amount of soap in your recipe with the washing soda, the borax, and whatever all else you add um, might be an inexpensive option. You would still be using detergent, but it would still be an inexpensive option for you. Some people have uh, said that they make the recipe with a natural um, detergent like Charlie's soap or uh, there's a couple uh, Dr. Broner's soap and things like that and they said that they have not had the same problems. There's another recipe that's circulating on the internet that uses Dawn dish soap in place of the laundry soap. In the, I don't know if it's in the recipe. I haven't actually seen the recipe, so uh, you know these are just. I'm just throwing some ideas out for you that you can Google and research and see. Uh, by the time I put this video out, I will see after I'm done making it here. I'll see if I can find any of those recipes for you, um, just so that you have some options and some things to uh, to check out. Now there are um, also a couple other very natural solutions uh, that people have recommended. Uh, the most interesting was ivy. Ivy leaves. You know, ivy grows, English ivy, it grows like crazy in my area. Apparently it, it grows just about everywhere. I don't know. I see it wrapped all around trees here and wrapped around my plants. and. <laughs> It, it's a, you know, one of those noxious weeds, but it is a high in saponins, which is the sudzine action that you get in soap. 
and I watched a young couple uh, on YouTube, and I will try to find that video again and link it for you down below, and that they actually showed you how to make laundry soap using the ivy leaves, and you basically just pick the leaves, you boil it, you strain it, the liquid that you have left over, you can wash your clothes. Can't remember how much you need to use or the process, you have to store it in the refrigerator, and it does go bad because it's a natural plant. So you would need to be making it fairly regularly, I suppose, but if you have ivy growing abundant, uh, in abundance on your property, in your neighborhood, or, you know, in a local park or something like that, it might be, it, it might be a free option for, uh, for you to make and, and try it out. Another interesting option uh, that has appealed to me uh, that I, I'm very curious about and is uh, soap nuts or soap berries and they are a plant that you can buy. Um, I, I looked on Amazon and I think it was a little over two pounds for about forty dollars and the packaging said that it will do 330 loads of laundry so they don't last forever but again it's another plant that's really high in saponins and I mean that's that's pretty cheap it, to be able to do that uh, with these soap berries apparently you just throw them into a, a, a bag like a burlap bag and then you throw that into your washing machine uh, when you're doing a, laund a load of laundry. So some of the, when I researched it and looked it up, some of the um, negatives or cons to soap berries is that it does not clean as well as some of the major detergents. So um, they also said you have to be very diligent about stains because it, it does not remove stains well. Uh, but, you know, that is actually the purpose of bars, soap bars like Zote and um, Fells naphtha is either hand washing or stain removal. So if you bought the supplies and you know, but now you've decided not to make the soap in, uh, not to make the laundry soap, uh, for a lot of the reasons I've shared, uh, those soap bars don't need to go to waste that you buy. You can use them for stain removal, and if you have hand washing of delicate items, you can use them for that. So this would be a great thing if you were using soap berries or soap nuts. If you use those in your laundry and you have done so for a while, I would love to hear from you because it is something that definitely um, is an interesting option. Oh, that's right. One more con is that you have to um, activate it with hot water. So you either have to wash your clothes in hot water with them or a lot of people will put some into a pot and simmer, you know, boil them for a while to extract all the 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 goodness out of them that you want and then what they and then strain them and then what they have left they call a soap berry syrup or something like that and then you can just add that to your regular load of laundry so that seems the most economical way as far as not because I don't usually wash in all hot water so that would that would certainly make it a lot more economical now there has been another um, lady on the internet. Her name is Heidi. She, her YouTube channel is Rain Country, and I'll leave a link below. And she came up with her own mixture that she uses, uh, and she uses it, it to clean with. And at the time that I watched her video, which has been a little while now, uh, she was starting to use it in her laundry. And it is basically a mix of uh, wa baking soda, washing soda and salt I believe so you'll have to check out her video now I made this and I thought it made a fantastic cleaner I used it for about a month on my laundry and I had no feelings one way or the other it wasn't like my laundry came out looking amazing and it wasn't like I was seeing problems with my laundry I really think that for me to give an honest assessment of it I would have to use it for a lot longer period of time. The other option is that you can buy surfactants. They are a powder. You can buy them off of Amazon. They have ones that suds. They have ones that don't sud. It's not a laundry detergent. It is just that, that uh, isolated part of what you need to break the surface tension of the water. So that had been another option that I had thought about researching and trying out is to buy um, a small amount of non-sudsing surfactant since I 
have an HE machine, I don't want the suds. And just adding a little bit of that to maybe like Heidi's recipe or just to the standard recipe but minus the soap. The last thing that I wanted to mention was vinegar as a rinse. So vinegar, I do use it occasionally, but I don't use it regularly. And one of the reasons I do is that I have read that vinegar will um, eat away at the rubber seals in your dishwasher, in your, because you can put vinegar in the dishwasher too, um, in your washing machine. Some people say it won't, but why take the chance? So I just use it periodically, especially if I just want to give my uh, washing machine a good cleaning or, you know, for whatever reason, I feel like I have clothes that need uh, more rinse time. Okay, you guys, that wraps up this video on why I don't make homemade laundry soap, part two. And, um, you know, if I get more feedback, more interest, try something new, more people comment and let me know their experiences with things, uh, who knows, there may at some point be a part three, and maybe sooner than over a year and a half that it took me to get to part two on this one. But thank you for hanging around this long, I appreciate it, and... Um, yeah, if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you like my content, would you consider subscribing? I would appreciate that. All right, you guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.